Thank you. Can't Thank see you. my thumbs up, Tushar. Or yeah, I'm now able to see. Okay. <laughs> now, so far, any question concerns before we continue further? Anything which doesn't make sense so far? You're confused. It's not making yeah, sense. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I understand the port forwarding, but what is the advantage for container to do port forwarding? So what happened is you have, please understand, this is your machine. This is your machine. And anything in your machine, and if any external person wants to connect with you, right? They only can connect through port in your machine, right? Now, <clears throat> there are certain ports are very popular. One is 80. So like the example, I have installed some software. Just an example, IS software, IS server, internet server I installed, which is listening to port 80. I already have it. <clears throat> and then let's say I install another server, <clears throat> which is running on, let's say, 90 port. Just an example, I install. Now, if I'm using container, I cannot use port 80 because my main machine is already using port 80. I can't use 90 because it's using it. Now, this guy say, I, I, I want to work 80, but I am already you occupy 80. So I said, don't worry about it. For you, I'm going to use 92 and then port forward to 80. So you can work and I don't have any problem. So this type of activity, port forwarding allows us to have a <clears throat> flexible port for your machine. Otherwise, you have to stop this thing. You have to stop this thing and then you have to start this thing. And sometimes it's not possible. So you can have multiple web server running on a different port. Port mm -hmm. forwarding is a very popular concept because your machine can only have one port 80. Only one. So if you are using it, you can't use it again. So far, we are stopping and using. Here, port forwarding allows us to keep this thing running and have this thing running. So that's the benefit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. So now, let's continue. So we did that. <clears throat> we did a doc <clears throat> Docker <clears throat> uh, process and we saw the process and we stopped the process and we saw that. <clears throat> now, let's pull the MySQL. <clears throat> Please understand. MySQL is nothing but Microsoft, sorry, MySQL database. <clears throat> in a real life, this is my desktop or laptop. I go to website, I install, download the software and I install. So when I install, I'm damaging my current machine. Damaging in the sense of I'm using my machine. <clears throat> now, let's say tomorrow, if I want to install another Microsoft, MySQL or I want to install something else, I can't do it because it will create a problem. Version 1. I install, if I try to do version two, I have to uninstall and install. If I do version three, I need to uninstall, install. So it's pretty problematic because I'm damaging my current machine. Sometime it's possible, I may not be able to use my database. To solve this problem, I say, wait a minute. <coughs> we are not gonna install MySQL. We are going to download the image. <coughs> when we download the image, and then we're gonna run MySQL as a container. It does not use any of my machine. It just uses my memory, but it will work in a isolation. So if I use version one of MySQL, I can have another container for version two and I, it will work without any difficulty. And I don't have to install anything. So it's very simple, very powerful. So first container does not damage your machine. And you can have your machine work smoothly the way it has been. MySQL is very popular. So like example, I can have a Java program or Python program can use my container MySQL and I can do all my work. No problem. So my program can use this container and I can develop like web applications and all and they can use container. So I can have one program use version three and one program can use version two and it's possible. If I install, it's not possible. But if I use container, I can support multiple versions and in one machine, I can use multiple version of MySQL and they're independent and I don't have to install and, and it's so easy, it will work. So this is the reason we are going to use MySQL. Now, in order for us to install MySQL, you can use many versions. So we are going to use version eight. 
Now, please understand. First, I'll explain the concept and then we'll work on. So first we'll say Docker run name MySQL. So when you say run name MySQL, so this is going to be your container. <clears throat> so you can say run. Now you're saying minus D. D means detach form. Detach form means it will run in a background. Now you are saying E, E for environment. We are saying the password is this. So when you run the MySQL, your root password will be change me or you can write any name. And then you are saying dash that restart unless stop. So restart means if it is running, if it is running, restart it. If it is not running, go and get it for me. So basically we are trying to do everything. Now, what it will do? We are saying go to MySQL and get the version 8. So if you go back to your <coughs> Docker Hub, in Docker Hub, you can search, see here, search by repository name. So you can search Docker Hub. So if you click here and search MySQL here, you will see all those availability of MySQL. So you can see here, this is like MySQL and you can see a lot of things available. And many MySQL, uh, what you call images are updated. You can see 1 billion download, 1 billion. So if I click on the MySQL, if I click on MySQL, it gives me instruction how to download. So first, if I do pull, I can download it. And then I can run it. I can do that. Or I can straight run it. And it will, when I run it, if it is not local, it will go and get it and download for me. So all those things, we're going to do that part. And there are some instructions are available. You can spend some time and you can see here. You can do all those. Funny part, and I'll tell you the funny part. <clears throat> funny part, most of the instructions they have, there are somewhere, somewhere you may have a problem. I'll be honest with you. So it takes a lot of time to make this instruction running. I already spent seven hours to make the instruction running. This instruction, if you try straightforward, it, it would have worked for someone, but somewhere something mismatch happened. And then what happened? It created a problem. Now installing MySQL is kind of very popular exercise. So I have done step by step. So first we are going to follow this command and we are going to ask our Docker engine, download MySQL version eight, create a container and run in a background and the password set the password change me. So that's what we are doing. So it will download and it will run it. Next, I'm saying that now we are saying execute, Docker execute, IT means interactive. The container name which you are using, I'm using this. So if I change container name to one, I will be using one. If I say two, then I'd say two. So this is the same as this one. So I started the container, I say, hey, execute command called MySQL P. MySQL command, you're gonna execute with P. P means password. And we already set a password here. So we're gonna set password. As soon as we set a password, we'll be able to log in. So now you can do all database related activities. So check it out. So let's, let's do one by one. <clears throat> so first copy this command and paste it and press enter. <clears throat> so it's already saying that I have, see, because I do practice and all, it say, hey, you know what? I cannot do this MySQL because it's already used. MySQL is already used. So I have to remove that. <clears throat> for you, it will work. For me, it won't work because I have that. So first I need to remove it. So first I'll say Docker container, right? Docker container, uh, in that case, LS minus A. <clears throat> and you can see somewhere I have MySQL, which is this one. So I'm going to remove that. Docker so here th this one is there so RM and this one oops so here this is the one because I'm already having that so I'm gonna remove that oh. so it remove do I have anything else? Only one. Okay. So now I'm going to use up arrow and it should work. So it worked. <laughs> Did it work for you? Yes. Okay. Now 
please understand you ran it so right now if i say docker ps i will see my entry point is right now mysql is running and i did not do port forwarding so you can see they are same port this is my machine port and this is container port so it's running and the the container name i this is the name i gave container and this is id and I, image is now i want to connect i want to connect to this image so we're going to run this command we're going to connect so we say right click and sorry we're going to use this one copy that and now we're going to say paste it so see here what's what we are saying docker execute to mysql which is this one and then run this command so we are going to run this command mysql dash p p means password so it will prompt me password when it prompt me password i'm going to enter this password change me so check it out it will prompt me password so it will not be visible you just type and press enter and you are in mysql how easy it is how easy it is you are now have mysql install <laughs> mysql you are in when you type password it won't be visible so please pay attention you just type type change me this is your password and as soon as you type you're in now this is full flesh mysql i can create database i can create table i can insert record i can do all and i have steps here so we're going to create database test so you can create database test so i'm going to say create database test and it will create database so you can see database created then i'll say use database test so i'll say use test and now database is used now i'll say create table so i have written all commands here so create table employee so create table employee with two column id integer name varchar 30 press enter so table is created employee with two columns it created you can see i'm, I'm having database in two minutes i'm now practicing database in mysql which is amazing right now i'm inserting emp id name value one and term i inserted the record record is inserted now i can run query select star from emp you don't need to worry about anything your database in your machine any questions so far pretty cool are you guys impressed in two minutes you have database installed you don't have to configure you don't have to install that's the power of container once it works yeah. it works it's good but uh, what is the difference between this one and virtual machine so virtual same thing actually but as i mentioned before virtual machine takes a lot of things so first virtual machine you need to do you need to create a virtual machine will take more memory so you need minimum 1 gb to 2 gb memory first right then you install operating system you don't you are operating system on top of that you install mysql so this is this type of thing virtual machine so first it takes time to configure it takes time to stop start it time it takes all and it's not reusable but here if you use this thing this is your thing you are just getting image and you don't need to install anything you just bring tiny image and as soon as you bring tiny image here it's right away working you see how it took on less than two seconds to use mysql here it will take two three hours to info install that two three hours and you have to buy operating system first you will need to pay money for that and you need a high-end memory 2 gb here you can run in 100 mb right so this is operating system uh, hardware level virtualization this is application level. so your application is running here so this is like a you can say this is the virtualization only but this is the optimized version of virtualization optimized level compared to 2 gb you have to need you need 100 mb compared to configure and all it takes two hours it takes two seconds starting stopping is easy so similar thing but better version optimized version of virtualization container is application virtualizations and virtual machine is a hardware or operating system level virtualization questions okay. <laughs> any other is there, is there any limit or limit for the 
number of programs to install in Docker? No, there is no limit. Actually, there's a limit on a virtual machine because it takes a lot of memory. Here, you can in I can run 70 virtual machines without even any problem. Here, I can hardly run four and I'll have a problem. There's no limit as such. Because if you're running all virtual machine at the same time, sorry, uh, content at the same time, then you might slowly, slowly run out of memory. But if you are start stopping this and you're starting this, stopping this, starting this, you will never have a problem. And this is the right way to do. So when you say cloud, cloud always now use container because this is no brainer. Cloud use container because it's simple, it's cheaper, it's faster, it's better compared to virtualization. So virtualization is old technology, container is a newer technology. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Good. So we can stop container. So we can now stop container. So we can say Docker stop MySQL. We can stop the container. Like, oh, sorry. First we need to come out. So if you want to come out, you just need to say, right? Then it will come out. And then you can say doc, sorry, Docker. You're going to say Docker stop. Oh my, I thought I copied that. We'll say Docker stop MySQL. That's my container. So it will stop it. And then I'll say Docker, right? Remove my container. What is my container name? MySQL. So it will remove the container. And I'll say Docker, you can. It's a Docker, it will remove the container. So you, you can remove your image, you can remove the container. So if I do, do this at Docker, um, if I say Docker container, right, LS, so I can see right now my uh, MySQL is gone. And if I say A, it's still here somewhere, right? So if it is here somewhere, then I can delete through this one. So if there is anywhere it is written here, like example, if I say MySQL, if anywhere here, I can use this one. And I can remove. So I can remove through name. I can remove through name or I can remove through image also. E either way is fine. Hmm. If you want to remove image, if you want to remove image, you can just say Docker image remove and then you can remove. So like example, if I search here, list of the image, so I'll say Docker image. So I have all images. So Docker images. So I have all images, but I want to remove this image. So in that case, I'll say Docker images, image RM, and then I can use my MySQL and you can press enter. So you can say no search MySQL because it is has it is especially using version eight, right? In that case, I'll say colon eight. So you're saying, you're saying Docker, remove the image MySQL, which is specifically version eight. So here colon version eight. So you're removing particular version. Now when super center, that is gone. So now if I search Docker up arrow images and you won't see that because it's gone. So you can remove the images. Hmm. Question so far? Does removing the image implicitly remove the containers? If sorry, could you repeat again? Does removing the image implicitly remove the containers? If if it is if it is running if it is running, it, or it will give you error. It will say, "Hey, you have not removed the stop the container. You have not removed." So it will give you error because it is associated. If you are used, um, otherwise, you, container has to be gone first before you remove the image because container is using image. So if it won't allow you. It will give you some error. It will say, hey, you're associated with this container. Go and remove that. So it's like that. Because image is your static and container is a dynamic. So if you try to remove static, dynamic will have problem as well. So best practice is to stop the container, Always. remove the container, and then remove the image. Correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. So you see my did a MySQL. Now, how many of you studied Jenkins? Install Jenkins. Did you guys install Jenkins last week? Yeah, we did. Right. Now I'm going to do Jenkins through container. Are you guys ready? In less than two minutes. Yeah. When you install Jenkins, you have to download, install, and all. Now we're going to do the same thing through Jenkins. I'm just giving you various example. We did Apache. Now we are doing MySQL, and now we are doing uh, what you call <coughs> Jenkins. 
trust me, having such kind of practical experience, if you do a little practice and you can certify, go to Docker certification if you want to go as a DevOps engineer. It's not hard. This is these are the command they ask, right? So now let's see what we are trying to do. So first, in this exercise, we are going to create our own Docker file. So we are creating a Docker file. Please pay attention. More you pay attention, easier it will become. <clears throat> so here I have a Docker file. So you can see from from this is one image. So Docker files are like this. So Docker file create a layers. It create a layer, then layer, then layer, then layer, and layer. So image are layers. So first it creates JDK. So it installs JDK. And then it says it's a pro this is just a label. And then it says environment is this. So it's using the environment. Make directory. These are command. So label is just like a label. It, it has no meaning. It's just a label which is eventually you can use this label as a dollar parameter like that. So whenever you use the variable, this is a key value, the key value. And later on, if you want to use the key value, you can say this is the key and this is the value. So you can write any environment. Like example, I say environment password and give a password name, environment host and I give a host name like that. Label is just a information all name. Now, when you say run command, it runs the command, make directory, dash p app area so what you are saying here what you are saying here this is your value this is your key so you are using here so you are saying make directory dash p app area basically you are asking to create this directory so you are asking go to container and container create this directory that's what you are asking and the, because the make directory will create now you are saying add this var file to that directory so the var file it will download and add into that directory and then you can say working directory is this so in jenkins there is a work working directory it will set the working directory and say expose 8080 so this container will internally expose 8080 so if computer wants to connect it can connect to 8080 but this is your machine machine can do port forwarding and say 90 so 90 it can receive 90 and it can go to 80 like that. So you are you are talking about how to create your container. So you are saying my container will receive traffic on port 80. Now you are saying CMD, Java, Java Jar, Jenkins var. So as soon as the container start, it should start with this file. That's the command you are asking to start. So first we need to create this file. So let's repeat again. The way it will happen, you have from it's an image. It's going to go download the image. This one is a maintainer who created that. Label is just for knowledge purpose. It has no meaning. If you don't write, no problem. This is the key value. So rather than using, keep using this name again and again, keep using again and again, you are using, say, hey, this is my variable. It's just like A equal to 5. And you keep using A everywhere. So when you use A, you keep using 5. So here, whenever you use app area, you're using directory. So you're creating directory. You're transferring this file to this directory. You're making the work directory like that, exposing the port. And this command say run Java, jar option, and run this thing. So it will run the Jenkins installation. So how should we do? So the first thing we need to do on your, on your what do you call, <coughs> command prompt, let's create a directory, mkdir mkdir <coughs> create a directory mkdir uh, that's a jenkins i'm creating a directory called jenkins again just to separation perspective so create a jenkins press enter so you create a directory jenkins now go inside that directory so you're gonna say cd jenkins so you are inside if you do here you are in a inside jenkins directory the reason I'm doing that because I want to keep entire things separately. Whenever you create Docker file, normally you create a separate folder and you create because each folder only one Docker file should exist. So right now I'm creating a folder called Jenkins. I'm going inside. Now here I'm going to name this way, not paid, D capital Docker file. 
I'm going to write Docker, D capital, Docker file. I'm going to say not paid, D capital, Docker file. So I'm going to say Docker file. D capital. Now press enter. File. I'll say yes, I want to create the file. Now you copy entire this portion just like that. Copy it. So here you copy that. <laughs> If you want to change the directory, you can. To change the directory, as long as this key is same, you can change your author name. So let's say uh, I'm going to write my name and Tom. You can write whatever author name you want. Instead of production, you can create, if you want to create a Q environment, dev environment, you can change that also, nothing wrong in that. And now I'm going to save it. So I didn't do much here. I just changed auth Tom. This is the environment like that. So now you're going to say file save. So when you do file save, let's do file save as, my mistake, click file save as, file save as. Now there is a one problem, please pay attention. There is a one problem. I wanna make sure you understand. Our file should not have a name .txt, okay? I don't want txt, so that's why I'm using save as. Let me repeat, file save as, and, and then select all files here. So you're selecting all files. Then go to your folder, which in your C drive user and our folder name was Jenkins. So double click and you are inside. Make sure you don't have .txt. Just keep a Docker like that. Don't do .txt files. So select here, all star, and make sure you go through your user, in your case, your username and the folder Jenkins, go there. I don't need this thing. I just need Docker. I'll delete that .txt file. So right now I'm going to save it. It is still replacing because it's still somehow, because it, we are using not paid, so it's doing text. Don't worry, I'll help you how to rename that. So right now still added text, Docker text. So this file is now created. If you want to see that file, so here, if you do uh, dir, you will see that file is created here. And if you do type and D capital, and so you can see the content of the file. So you can see that. So far, any question? So far, so good. Do we have to remove the? Uh, I will. Text? I will show you. Okay. Yeah, we will remove. You don't have to remove. Without remove, you can do it. And with remove, you can do. So I'm going to show you how to do. For that, we need to use rename. <clears throat> so we'll say rename. Then D capital and tab. Rename, so you just do this thing, rename, D capital and tab, and a space, D capital and tab, and remove the TXT like that. So now you're saying rename, this file name will be renamed to this file. So now the name will be changed, dot TXT will be gone. Press enter, and now your Docker file is ready. So if you do DR, Docker file is ready, and if you do type, you can see Docker file is Ready to go. Any questions so far? <clears throat> so far, so good. Awesome. Now we are going to say we are going to run a command called build. We're going to say build. So build will read this file and set dash t. T means tag. So name that as a Jenkins. Uh, you can also give a version. If you want to give a version, so I'm giving version one and dot means current directory. So the, it will current directory. It will look for Docker file in current directory. It will look for Docker file in current directory. It will look for Docker file. So Docker build dash T. So whatever you create, the image will be no, name as a Jenkins colon one colon one means first version and dot means current directory in current directory. It will look for the Docker file. So you copy this. We are in the same directory right now. So you right click and paste. So what will happen is you are saying this will be a name. This image will be named as a Docker Jenkins one. I already have, so I might have error because I already have it. I'll remove it and try. So check it out. So I press enter. So you can see it started building it because I have a new directory. That's why it allowed. And you can see right now, nicely it built. 
So if you carefully see here, it gives you idea how it follow that. So it is say that first it says, I'm going to get the load metadata from this one. So this is what the instruction was. So it's image it took. So it pulled that image. Then now it's a cache this, so it get, it cached this file and then it got this one. And then it added here. And you can see one by one it ran the command make directory. So it ran the make directory command because you ask make directory. Then you add this, then working directory, it did that and then expose the layer. So it's created a layer by layer like that. So each layer you can modify, add, remove, change later. So you can reuse those layers. Basically, that's a beautiful part about the Docker. Each layer is independent. So like example, I can, when I do this command again, it will use this layer because that was the first layer. It will use it. If I use this command again, it will use that layer. So it will save time. Basically, it like that. So right now the image is created. So if I do this command Docker images, images and LS, sorry, images only images. So you will see here I have I have image the the Jenkins one which I created just now. Are you guys able to see Docker images? Yes. yes, no. Perfect. Now, now here, if you want to get more information as you go further, now we are going to say, I have a Docker, which is running on Expose 80. So this is a, this internal port. And this is my machine port, which is my laptop port. So Docker run, D means detach mode. D means port. This is my machine port. This is container port, image ID. So we will use image ID whichever the image ID we have, we can use this one or you can use image ID. So if you see here, when I did this one, my image ID is this one. Okay, so we're gonna use this one. So carefully copy this thing up to this, Control C. I paste it here, oops. I need to copy this properly. Control, copy this and paste here and then you pick that image ID. So it will run this image ID. It will run this image ID. Please pay attention. And and this will the post port this port through. I can see this container. So I can touch this image when it runs. It will create a container. And once it container, I can reach that container through port 80. So if I request port 80, it will go to container. Container will run and I'll see Jenkins. So press enter <coughs> and it is started. So it started. <coughs> now I'm curious what's going on here. Is it happening something, not happening something? I need to understand. So I'll say Docker PS. So right now Jenkins should be running. So you can see Jenkins is running. Now it may take a couple of minutes to see that running or not. So let it be like that. Now during this exercise, you right click here, right click here and open a new tab and see if you are able to see Jenkins view. So if you see that after a few seconds, you will see Jenkins window. You will see Jenkins because right now it's starting, but after a few seconds, you will see Jenkins and ta-da, Jenkins is installed. <clears throat> and you are now getting admin, the initial password and all. So good news, Jenkins is installed in your machine. It's running. So I can I can do all Jenkins related activity and it's good to go. Was it hard at all? I mean, I have already installed a Jenkins and <laughs> I think that is why I'm getting error. What error are you so getting? Port 88 is uh, you can do 90. not available. Yeah, you can change that port. Port forwarding you can do. Yeah. So in that case, you have to change here. Make it 9090. If you are okay, 90, 90, and then rest is 80, 80 is fine. And when you access that, that time you make sure you change to 90, 90, and it will work. Yeah. So Murthy, did you notice that? That's the reason port for forwarding is very popular. So he has already, yeah, yeah. So he has a choice. He had to uninstall and all, he doesn't want to do, so he can do port forwarding. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, one quick question. Mm -hmm. This uh, letter notations, uh, meaning will change by context? Why I am asking is... Which letter? LA, Which letter? Uh, P is password. Here P is uh, port. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a program. Program drives. That, that P was initially interpreted by MySQL. Right? Mm. This P is in, interpreted by Docker. So Docker think P means port forwarding. But MySQL P means password. So that's the program oh. to program, right? It's a, they have, yeah, there is changes. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And you can see I have Docker here and I can play around. I can configure Docker and I can play around. But easy, you know that how to do all rest. Pretty easy, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. you can see how easy to install Docker and all. Trust me. It's not that hard. It just requires a couple of days practice. In two hours, you are seeing how much you are doing, right? Because I have done this thing many years. So I created a lab for you guys, step-by-step -step lab. If you try to struggle, the biggest problem of uh, this type of technology is there is no special document which works all the time. So that's why I created this thing. Step-by-step, -step, if you follow, it will work. It took me time, but you see, you all will get a benefit, right? Um, we do have slides and all, but style does not walk you through step by step. I have to show you and we are showing you, but you can do that. Let's do one more um, or you guys can do as well. Um, but you can see, uh, let me just show you something and you can play around. We did that Ubuntu, so you don't have to worry, but you can create a, another Docker file. You can create a build and you can run the Docker. Uh, this time I did not create a Docker a file, I create a ubuntu.txt file and I'm running that. So in that case, I need to do minus F and file name and then same concept. I can run it and I can play around. I can see that. So, so this is pretty interesting. And now let's say I want to, I want to push. So right now we know how to run it. We change that. But now I want to push my, my image. Listen carefully. I created an image and I want to push my image to my repo, my uh, Docker repo. So this concept is called push. So you can create your own image. You can create your own image, just like we created in Jenkins image, right? And if I want to push that image, I want to push this image to repo, I can do it. Now question is how do we do that? So first thing first, first, Anytime you want to create the, uh, uh, what do you call, anytime you want to push the image, you have to follow certain standard. First, you, this is the image I have, hello world. Uh, this is my image. Now I need to use my username, my repo, Docker username, and what would be the name when I push it? So this is my local, my machine has this image. This is the ID of my repo. And this will be the name over there. So first I need to do tagging. So first I need to tag. So the local which I have, which will be known on a production or a repo this way, my name, ID, and this one. And then I'll set Docker push and this one, that's it. And it will do the magic. So let's do the one by one. So first we're gonna, first let's check, do I have hello world? I think we have hello world, we have done that. So it should be there. So let's do Docker. Images, images, so hello world is here. You see this, hello world is here. Now what we are going to do, we're gonna create a hello world other. So <clears throat> we're gonna create that part as a tagging. I already have that. So I may need to remove that. So just, uh, And say Docker image remove if that is image ID is this one. Is see multiple repository. So uh, I cannot delete because it is a reference to multiple repository. That's fine. Uh, let me follow the same way. If needed, I'll change the name here. But let's do that. So I copy this thing. And so Docker, I'm saying tag, hello world to this one. So 
this one I'm taking this it might cry because I already have it so it's okay so it's there so I tag it so now I said this one please when you do that please understand you use your ID you have to use your ID not my ID your ID and hello world this ID is same as your docker repo when you log into docker repo right you log in to docker hub uh, where did it go I thought I heard did I close it docker Uh, docker hub maybe docker hub when you log in right you have your id there so that's what it is this is your id so this is your id and then i'm going to give this name so this is what i gave tagging now we are going to push that so this is the command docker push and the same name which you created here so whatever you created here your id and the name so right now I'm going to push it. See, I have to copy paste problem. Okay, here we go. Right click and copy. So when I go here, I paste it here. So what I'm saying here, I want to push. I want to push this tag to repo, right? So press enter and it's going to push it. It's already exists. It's a layer already exists. So you just update that in your case it will be pushed let me know if you're able to push it did it work yes, it did. perfect so this way you create your own um, what you call repo and you can push it the benefit of push it please pay attention uh, you are developing the docker file from docker file you created image from image, it's available in your local machine only, but your team members are waiting for you. They need to use it. So they want to pull it. So you have to push it. So you push it here. So once you push it, now they can pull it. So if they can pull it, and then now they can reuse your work. So in industry, one person create the image and the person who create it's called DevOps person. The DevOps person create the image, push it in repository, and then then either jenkins can pull and deploy or other team member can pull it and, and test it out or run or what other thing but devops person build it and then they push it to repository so it's a devops responsibility to create a docker file uh, to create an image and push it pushing is pretty simple so now let's say next time you made a change then you can specify hello world colon two then three then four and create a version out of it. So the when, when and then you push it, it will push as a version. And then somebody pull it, they will say Docker pull. And then they have to give, they will give an exact same name. And then they pull that specific version. So push and pull will happen regular basis. Good. Now, so we can do that. We oh, can please, also, sorry. Yeah. Where can we find that push? Sorry, my mistake. Uh, the file we just pushed, right? In uh -huh. Repository. Where can uh -huh. we find it? It's in Hub. Uh, it's here. In hub. Yeah, uh, this one. You can see here. It's Hub. If you last, if you refresh here, it will change the. You will see in your, right there in Hub. See, I have here two minutes back. I push it. Are you not able to see? Yes, I see it now. So anything you push it, it is, uh, sorry. It is in a remote repository, right? Yeah. So the remote repository lies in the company server or somewhere else? Normally company will have their own repository. This one, Docker repo, they will install and create their own local because they don't want to show, they don't want to show uh, anyone. These are proprietary, right? We are using public one. We are using public right. one, but in a company, they will have their own repository where you will push that. Same command. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, very close. And in case if you want to clean an entire machine, you can just do that entire machine. So you can do a Docker system pool, or you can remove all images if you want to do. Again, I'm not going to do it, but you can see that the commands are here. Now, 
two more concepts I can complete and then we'll take a break. Now these are more concept theoretical concept. I want to just completely clear. Now the two things called swarm. So this is this is like when we when Docker started first thing, uh, the Kubernetes was not popular. That time so Docker was there. So people used to create a container like that. But then when the containers are increasing, it was pretty hard to stop, start, stop, start, scale, all those things it was creating a problem. So Docker Swarm came in picture. So Docker came, Swarm architecture is very simple. Your manager and your machines here, they, they call worker. So now you, you work here on manager, you instruct manager that I need five, five replica. So manager will create five for you. You can say, I want to change version. The manager will do, so administration becomes easier. So the reason Docker Swarm was here, you can say stop. Then manager will say stop. So rather than going to five, you just give it to manage, manager command and manager will translate that for you. So Docker Swarm is basically container orchestration. Container orchestration for less than 50, if you have less than 50 container, you might be able to use Swarm. It, mostly it's very popular for on-prem setup, on-prem setup where they don't have a Kubernetes install. So people use Swarm. If you have one or two container, three container, people use Swarm. But if you have 500 or 1000, then people use Kubernetes. If you're using cloud, people use Kubernetes. But if you're using on-prem, people still use Swarm. So Swarm is not that bad, it's simple but for limited container management. You can do scale, you can start, you can do, you can say change certain parameter without restarting. There are basic things you can do in Swarm. In order to do so, people you know, run command on managers, manager and worker node. I think I have a picture maybe. Yeah, this one. So your manager node, your leader node and worker node. So manager is one and then there are like this. All administration work are done through managers. You, you run the same command, docker, container, start. Manager will interpret and manager will start, stop accordingly, manager will do. There is a one is leader, out of that one is leader and others will become a worker node. Leader will, if manager is not available, leader will do administration activity. So that's why it is. Again, not that popular nowadays because Kubernetes kill this thing, technically speaking. You will hardly find people are using Swarm, but if you are going for interview, exam, people will ask you. Swarm was before Kubernetes. So after Kubernetes came, to be honest with you, I personally stopped using Swarm because Swarm I used for two, three project in 2006, 7, 18, 7, 18, 19, and Kubernetes came and we all switch over to Kubernetes because Kubernetes has a lot more flexibility than Swarm. Swarm was basic container management, Kubernetes gives you deployment management, orchestrations, plugging, praising, and a lot of filtering, a lot of monitoring, a lot of goodies, Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is ultimate for container management. Swarm was a very beginner, I would say. A easy language, it's a very starter type of thing. But after that, people switch to Kubernetes. Now, in this exercise, there is concept, whenever you use this, like a swarm, I'm assuming you need more, more containers. So there is a concept also came called Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is the same concept, but here we talk about manager. We talk about here, uh, you know, the worker node, right? And if you say, hey, if you say, hey manager, I want to, I want to have three NGX. So it will create one, two, and three. So this concept which you do here, it's called service. And this service concept came through Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is add-on on Docker. Docker Compose is add-on on Docker. So right now what we have, we have Docker, but now it came with Docker Compose. In old fashion, we used to install Docker. And top of that, we used to install Docker Compose as a separate addition. Docker Compose, Docker Compose works with the Swarm. So if you are using Swarm, then you use Compose. In Compose, you have multiple containers. You have scale and other parameters are there. So let's take an example so you will understand here. So here, 
I have container one and I have container two. If I combine together, then let's go compose. And all compose I create through YAML file. Just like we so far we were doing Docker file. Docker file, for Docker file through you create one image, but using this uh, compose YAML file, you can create a multiple container. YAML file can use Docker file. So if you want to use Docker file, you can use Docker file and YAML can call this Docker file. So again, you can do that. So if you see the example, I'll show you here. This is the example of Docker compose. So here we call service. And in that there are two aspects of image, web and database. So we are an image also. So, ready. so there are three actually. So this is one, this is two, and three. So three images together work as a one service, work as a one service. So you create this file and then you can say Docker, the command you run is the simple Docker compose up. So if you say up means it will go to this file and it will up this, it will up this and it will up this. If you say stop, so you can stop this, stop this, stop this, stop this. So through one command, you can stop all container. So that's the benefit about Docker uh, Compose because one command can up, one command can, can stop. So that's one. It's only three, four commands for Compose. Start, start, stop, uh, like that. You can also destroy. So if you say Docker uh, Compose destroy, remove, then it will remove all container at once. So it's easy, easy to manage. It's just like if you uh, cloud uh, in a in AWS, like you know when you do cloud formation, right? Entire template you can add or remove. So it's all stack. You can do that. That's easy. Second thing, you also get a benefit of compose is let's see here. Let's say this is one image, and this is second image. Please pay attention. If this image has a dependency, then you can specify the dependency in a Docker Compose, which you cannot do in a Docker independently. So Docker Compose allows you dependency map. So you can do dependency map. This container depend on another container. So first it will start this and then it will start other. So you can do that type of thing. You can also specify your environment, environment parameters, which can you can customize through outside world. Again, there are a little bit of flexibilities are there. Docker Compose is also gone because as soon as Docker Swarm gone, right? Docker Swarm gone, Compose also gone. So this one is also now, nowadays people are not using. So people, what they use nowadays is Terraform. So similar thing Terraform does. The similar thing Terraform does, similar, they call concept called deploy, deploy YAML. Concept is exact same deploy YAML and you, they also use image when they use image it's a docker image they use exactly same but they use deploy YAML so if somebody asks currently what people are using people can honestly speaking it's pretty hard to find a company who are using uh, compose because people are nowadays using either helm chart helm chart or they're using terraform whichever so if you are using helm chart it's the same as a YAML concept or you use Terraform. The YAML same is, process is exactly same. You define image, you define port, you define dependency and all. Now there is a one concept in interview people often ask volume. So what is volume? So let's pay attention, you will understand. So when you are creating container, a container needs to store some data. Container needs to store some data, but by nature of container, container is supposed to be read only. So container say, okay, if you are putting me or adding me on a machine, I will map to the host machine. So container write that, but it will be actually written on a machine. So that concept is called volume. So in container, in container, we will say HTML, but actually it will be writing on a host machine. So if you destroy container, the file data will be stored. So volume is nothing but persistent persistent storage. What is persistent storage? Because container you stop, you start and you remove. You start, stop and remove. So you don't want to lose data. So in order to save your data, you write a volume. So container map to the 
to the local machine and using that it preserve the data most often ask in interview questions the same concept apply for terraform same concept apply for hand chart the volumes are volume it's for persistent storage good few more minutes i will be close I'm, i know i'm late so just want to finish another question in interview how how container talks to container so container talks to container with special network they call breeze network they call breeze network and this network through they talk so container can talk to another container so example you can have python container and you can have a, a database container they can talk to each other through breeze network so again as a fire type of question and i kind of put here what commands you have what is the purpose of the commands you can see that now your homework so homework is here go through this homework this is like a question answer and i want you to do this lab yourself this lab is pretty good if you do that you are a pro because it, it gives you step by step instructions about python i know some of you don't study python so you will create a python server and then you will follow that and you will create a image you will do the image part you can create a docker image you will follow that and now everything will work and at the end of the day you will test it out and then push your image so you are done with that so please play around and that complete my part for today uh, you have this thing powerpoint has a lot of commands play around because uh, commands are here so if you see our powerpoint has a lot of command i cover all the details but if you want to run the some command there are some good commands are here so you can play around the commands this is another lab if you want to do our site has a lab you can play around this lab also but the commands are good here so if you want to run some commands like example if you want to see the log file if you want to inspect if you want to inspect something you can do so please go through the command some command you don't have to memorize all command you can always do googling but whatever i explain it's all details are explained in powerpoint and much more details are explained in the forum that's all i have i hope you enjoyed today's session but if you have any question please ask otherwise from next week uh, most likely narendra will continue uh, he will review a little bit and then he will move on to um, what do you call kubernetes so he will do that good news about it you have please pay attention if you have docker if you right click here yeah if you right uh, let me yeah here you can see the kubernetes so you can you can you can enable the kubernetes here so it's kind of nice you can practice that so those who do not have um, what do you call this install please do install because you can do kubernetes so i think i'm not sure nandri is going to use this kubernetes or he is going to use minikube but whichever works uh, both works almost same way and you will see some similarity of docker file and deployment file or service file you will see similarity when you go through the kubernetes so that thank you so much and if you have question please let me know otherwise i'll put the recording in the uh, google class and once you complete the homework we'll give you grading uh, yeah, a quick question. Sure. You said uh, go for the Docker's uh, certification. Yes. When when Kubernetes is so popular, why we are going for Docker's? Oh, good question. So this is what is. So you will understand. So think about that. You are you are a horse cart. Horse cart. So these are horse, and this is the cart. And there is a person sitting here. Let's say this is you, Murthy, and you are riding horses, right? Now, if I ask you a question, can horse work? Can cart works independently? Yes or no? No. Can horse work independently? Yes. Yes. So one horse work independently, two horse work independently. But if you have five, one million horses, one million horses. Can you manage independently? No. So this is Kubernetes. And this is Docker. So Docker, you must know in order to work in Kubernetes. Because if you don't have a Docker, you don't have a container. And if you don't have a container, you don't need to have a manager, orchestrator, the guy who control the horses, right? So mm -hmm. Kubernetes is a controller. It doesn't do anything. 
the main magic happen in docker today you learn the magic docker file image uh, image and, and container you need a container then you how many containers that's called deployment scale but then stopping starting transporting port routing persistent version security that will go through this guy and that's a kubernetes so they both have importance kubernetes independently cannot work docker independently can work so that's why we cover docker first but for kubernetes you must know docker or at least some container technology make sense okay. yeah now you will see horse cart you will remember right horse is yeah. the docker and the guy who is managing those horses is kubernetes mm -hmm. make sense or no yeah good example right you will never exactly. forget <laughs> okay so that's thank all you. no no problem thank you everyone and thank you for the you know staying for a little bit late and sorry for the hiccup because some reason it